Hello friends, welcome to a new lecture today. This is called as Cooley's Fracture. This is called as Cooley's Fracture. So, Cooley's Fracture, it is a fracture at distal end of radius at corticocancellous junction. If you see the fracture, he said distal end of the radius at the corticocancellous junction. So, this is the cortico cancellous junction whenever there is a fracture at this cortico cancellous junction this is called as Cooley's fracture this cortico cancellous junction is about 2 cm from the distal articular surface this is most common in people more than 40 years of age and also in women that to post menopausal women it is also caused it is more common in in age group more than 40 years of age and also in post menopausal women now what is the cause of this Cooley's fracture? It is whenever there is fall on the outstretched hand that can cause this Cooley's fracture. Now, what are the pathoanatomy? So, this Cooley's fracture, it is most displaced fracture. It is easily displaced. So, there are different types of displacement. It can be displaced. Mm, lateral tilt can be there. See, I'll just show you a diagram. Okay, I'll just draw a diagram and this will tell us about the displacements of Cooley's fracture. So, there can be, if you see, proximal shift can be there, radial shift can be there, radial tilt can be there, just a small tilt can be there, or sometimes you can even see this looks something like this. Here there is proximal shift. If you see, there is shifting like this, right? There is a little shifting like this. So there can be proximal shift or there can be dorsal shift or there can be dor dorsal tilt. The, truly speaking, there are different types of re displacements. Displacements are not simple in Cooley's fracture. Now, this Cooley's fracture is also associated with other types of fractures. It can sometimes be associated with fracture of styloid process of ulna or fracture of a rupture of ligaments occurs during this Cooley's fracture. What ligaments does it occur? Ulnar collateral ligament, triangular cartilage of ulna can rupture or rupture of interosseous radio ulnar ligament can occur. I'll just show you the ruptures. So these are the different associations where you can see that there is fracture of styloid process of ulna, rupture of ulnar collateral ligament can occur, rupture of triangular cartilage of ulna can occur, rupture of interosseous ulnar Radio ulnar ligament can occur. At the end, because of all these ruptures of ligaments and cartilages, there can be radio ulnar subluxation. Okay. Now, let, let's know about the diagnosis of this Cooley's fracture. How are you going to, what are the clinical features of Cooley's fracture first? The main clinical features. So, what are the clinical features of this Cooley's fracture? The main clinical features of Cooley's fracture are pain and swelling at the and deformity at the wrist joint. At the wrist joint, there will be pain, swelling and deformity. And then, if you examine it, you will see that there is tenderness and irregularity of the lower end of radius. And sometimes you will see some deformities also. If he comes late, then you will have to do an X-ray. X-ray, you will have to do both anterior posterior view and also the lateral view. Okay. So, in the anterior posterior view and lateral view, you can see the displacements. Where the displacement is there and what is the type of displacement can be known by this anterior posterior view and lateral view. Okay. Now, how are you going to treat the fracture? Treat the fracture, it depends upon whether the fracture is undisplaced or whether there is displacement. Okay. If the fracture is undisplaced, we don't need to do anything. We will just mobilize, immobilize the fracture. Sorry. Immobilize in below elbow uh, plaster now below elbow plaster you will immobilize in below elbow plaster you will use a below elbow plaster or it can be Cooley's fracture also can be used Cooley's plaster also can be used and you will immobilize it okay if there is displacement then you will have to do a reduction and then you'll have to do an immobilization again okay so if there is a displacement you'll have to reduce it first and then you'll have to do immobilization so what is the technique of reduction of this Cooley's fracture i'll just show you the diagrams which i have drawn prior so that it becomes easier than drawing it again so 
द टेक्निक ऑफ क्लोज मैनिपुलेशन सो इन द टेक्निक ऑफ क्लोज मैनिपुलेशन इफ यू सी द मजल्स सो फर्स्ट दिस इज द सर्जन हैंड द सर्जन विल ग्रास्प द हैंड हैज इफ ही इज शेक शेक हैंडिंग सो दिस इज द सर्जन हैंड ओके दिस इज द सर्जन हैंड दिस इज द एन एस सॉरी सॉरी दिस इज द सर्जन हैंड दिस इज द असिस्टेंट हैंड ओके द सर्जन विल ग्रास्प हिज हैंड लाइक दिस ओके हैज इफ ही वॉज शेकिंग हैंड्स ना ना वॉट डज ही डू ना आफ्टर ग्रास्पिंग द हैंड्स लाइक दिस दिस इज द पेशेंट हैंड दिस इज द सर्जन हैंड दिस इज एन एस सॉरी असिस्टेंट हैंड सो द सर्जन विल ग्रास्प हिज हैंड and then he will apply a pressure in this direction so he will apply traction in this direction okay and this assistant he will uh, grasp the this end of the elbow I mean this end of the forearm okay and then he will give counter traction here counter traction is given by the assistant whereas traction is given by the surgeon whenever this traction and counter traction are given all the displacements which are there here they will be collected corrected most of the displacements will be corrected by this traction alone so what is the surgeon doing the surgeon applies so sur surgeon first shakes his hand with the patient's hand and then he will apply a traction a longitudinal traction um in his direction whereas the assistant will grasp the forearm the other end of the forearm and he will apply the counter traction okay so this is first step where which is called as traction and counter traction step okay now the second step is correction of dorsal tilt now this is the surgeon's hand now, now surgeon has already completed applying the traction now the assistant is grasping here itself now the surgeon's other hand the second hand of the surgeon with that hand he will just press on the distal fragment of the fracture you will you will find the distal fragment right on the distal fragment of the fracture he will just press it okay like this if this is the distal fragment he will just hold this distal fragment and he will press it so that this displacement is corrected this dorsal tilt which is there that dorsal tilt is corrected okay so that is one thing then then after correction of dorsal tilt now the slowly the hand is pronated slowly if you see slowly he will apply this um uh, you will apply the surgeon will apply this pressure and slowly by, uh, along with applying the pressure he will just rotate it in such a way that he will do pronation of the hand and he will do palmar flexion so during that time the radial tilt or any other tilts which are present they will be corrected so this is the technique of closed reduction okay now once you have reduced the swelling you will put it in the cast after reducing the swelling you will put it in the cast the main problem here is there is a chance for redisplacements okay because there is a chance of redisplacement we will have to monitor the patient mostly yeah this is the collis factor right i have said the reduction right Be uh, you'll have uh, because there is a chance of redisplacement always monitor the patient with x rays and you will have to see whether it is fully corrected or not okay if uh, even after doing all this even then if you see there is displacement okay and it has it has not been reduced in such cases you will have to do open reduction and internal fixation you will have to fix it okay if even after doing all this even then the it is not properly aligned it is not properly reduced then you do open reduction and internal fixation okay so this is about the treatment of the colis fracture now let us learn about the complications of the colis fracture so the complications of the colis fracture are first there can be stiffness of the joint because we will have to immobilize it and whenever we don't uh, whenever he does not does whenever um whenever a joint is put in immobilization for a longer period that can cause stiffness of the joint and sometimes you can even uh, uh, see that the joint uh, Uh, become stiffened due to the formation of fibrous adhesions during that time it becomes stiffened so this stiffness of the joint is most common so as a result we will have to prevent this stiffness of the joint by actively moving other joints 
the one more thing is along with the joint of the wrist wrist is immobilized that's okay uh, most of the pay most of the patients has the has they are on uh, plaster casts they don't try to move other joints like they will uh, stop moving the elbow joint they will stop moving the uh, shoulder joint they will sh stop moving the fingers and as a result you uh, they, uh, we will also see a uh, presence of stiffness in other joints so in such cases we will have to try to uh, we will have to ask the person to uh, move the other joints also okay that is one thing second mal union the main cause of this mal union is redisplacement after put after putting him on in the colis uh, cast uh, after the reduction of the joint uh, reduction of the fracture even then there is redisplacement during that time there is mal union so how are you going to treat it this mal union will lead to deformity right so whenever there is deformity normally we don't do we don't treat this mal union if it's mild then we can leave as it is but if it is severe severe deformity then you will have to treat it by osteotomy you will have to cut that deformed bone deform deformed deformed bone okay so that is mal union the third type of uh, the third complication here is subluxation of inferior radio ulnar joint this most this can occur due to the impaction of the distal fragment whenever there is imp this impact this distal fragment whenever it impacts the joint that can cause subluxation of the radio ulnar joint so if it's minor degree it is acceptable if it's in elderly but if it is in high if it's severe or if it's moderate and if that is involving uh, that is uh, affecting the mobility of the joint then you will have to do excision of lower end of the ulna and that is called as direct resection what is direct resection here you will excise the lower end of ulna so this is excise lower end of ulna okay that is direct resection this can be done for subluxation next fourth there can be carpal tunnel syndrome you'll just have to depress this carpal tunnel syndrome what is carpal tunnel syndrome because during during after the fracture unites so this fracture can compress the median nerve a uh, fracture can compress the median nerve so that is carpal tunnel tunnel syndrome you will have to relieve the compression now the fifth one is sudex osteodystrophy this can occur once the uh, plaster is removed there can be pain swelling and stiffness of the hand so for this sudex osteodystrophy we will have to just give physiotherapy so these are the different complications of um colis fracture so thank you guys for watching my lecture in my next class i will explain about the other fractures thank you